And it's in the mud. And I'll walk out of this place if I have to. I'm not going to sit down here and be a survivalist. Wondering if we're going to stay warm or have something to eat. I'll walk out of this place. I'll leave that hunk of rust sitting out here. <laughs> it's amazing how we get so wound up about things sometimes. The washing machine goes out and we think the world's come to an end. My grandma would have loved to have one. The dishwasher goes on the brink and it's, oh my goodness, how are we going to wash the dish? Well, I had two dishwashers and they both quit. <laughs> she left home and somehow in her thinks that that reneges her obligation to come back and keep the dishes clean. I never understood why we pay our kids to take the garbage out. Somebody says, why do we pay our kids to do family chores? Well, I'll tell you why you don't pay your kids to do family chores. Because they're family chores. <laughs> You pay your kid to take the garbage out, guess what? They'll probably be driving the garbage truck one day. <laughs> so well, I, I've seen some people paying their kids to do some stuff, and I just went ahead and prophesied it. I said, I see a bright future in lumber. <laughs> I'm dead serious. Now think about that. Think about that for just a minute. Man, my dad told me to do something. It wasn't because I was getting an allowance. It's called John Wink said, you get up off there, boy, and you go do what I told you to do. I mean, my goodness, boy, you lived in your mama nine months. You already behind on rent. Say, I love y'all. Look, look at y'all. Y'all are laughing. Have a good time. That tells me that God's doing something. You know what? I've really been, I really noticed it. And I, and I have, going on these seven years, I have seen God working in people's lives that come here. I, I can remember some of you came and you was a mess. You was an absolute mess. You're, you're, you, you were emotionally distraught, depressed, I know some of you that was depressed. I know some of you that was angry and bitter at the world. I know some of you that was looking for a job, didn't have a job. Hasn't the Lord blessed you? Amen. Uh, some of you been some of you been sick, some of you been hurt, and yet God has come and and done a work in your life. We didn't have no hoodoo magic. We didn't have, we had a little oil slap on your head once in a while, but the Lord told me to quit because I was drowning everybody with it. But I was actually enjoying it a little bit. Went to pray for her up here one night, and she pointed at me and said, Don't you think about it. Because <laughs> I was having a little fun with another oil. See, I think God laughs at His children and laughs with His children. Amen? Amen? But I've seen the Lord working in your life. I've seen you... Many of you that are stronger in the faith now than you were a year ago. God's done something in your life. I like people that are real. I like people that don't put on a facade and say, look at me, the, the holy Christian. I like people that are real as the rain coming down. I like people that are not afraid to admit whenever they're having problems in their life, but they're also ready to shout it from the housetops when God's come down and done something in their life. I like people that are real. That's one thing I always love about these people here because we'd be over in a carport and somebody come up and say, yeah, I smoked a joint last night, I got drunk, and all that. Next thing you know, we're praying for them under the carport they fall down on the floor. Yeah. <laughs> It felt, it felt good for that night until they went and did it again. And then we figured out that falling out wasn't working. That wasn't working for us. But I want to tell you, the cross works. Amen. Yes, amen. And if you will hang on to what Christ has done for you, and you'll put your faith daily in what Jesus 
has done for you. Let the trials come. Let the manifest manifold uh, 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 temptations and trials come in your life. But Christ will take you through. This Jesus that died on the cross has accomplished all of it for you already. Yes. You just rest in that. Just like these youngins sitting in these chairs right here. You rest in what Jesus has done for you. He's done it all for you. He's made the way for you. He is your comforter. Oh yes, the Holy Spirit who lives inside of you. Jesus in the heart. The comforter. The one you rely on. The one that you, you rest in. The one who will work for you. Did you know that when you put your faith in Jesus Christ and what He did on the cross, that the Holy Spirit, part of the triune Godhead, the Holy Spirit that lives in each and every believer, did you know that whenever you say, I trust in what Christ has done for me on that cross, and I'm depending on the work He's done for me, did you know that the Holy Spirit who lives inside of you, whenever you have that, that kind of faith, He says, alright, now I can help that. I can do something for them. Because they have ceased from their own works. They've ceased from trying to be holy in themselves. If you go on and read this here, he talks about be holy because I'm holy. But the only way that I can be holy is my dependence upon Him and what He's done for me. I'm sanctified not because of what I've done, but because of what He's done. I'm justified not because of how good I've been, but because of what Christ did for me. Amen. He's done a legal work for me. Did you know that there was a legal binding a, a, a charge against each and every one of us right. whenever we was lost? Did you know that there was a charge against us from heaven for crimes that even though we may not have committed a crime, yet we were guilty of the crime of sin? And there was a charge from heaven that declared us unholy, unfit, unrighteous. And there was nothing that we could do about it. There was no works. There was no lamb we could sacrifice. There was no helping little ladies across the street or paying your tithe or, or anything good that you could do that would make that charge go away. But then the Son of God stepped on the scene. Amen. And the Son of God says, I'll go to the cross. I'll pay the price for them. I'll do for them what they cannot do for themselves. I'll go to the cross and I'll pay the price for Bruce. I'll pay the price for Jerry. I'll pay the price for Tristan. I'll pay the price for Karen. I'll pay the price for Brown. I'll pay the price for Ray. I'll pay the price for Mike. I'll pay the price for Jeff. This is what Jesus did. He went and paid for you and I what we could not pay for ourselves. And He redeemed us through the cross of Christ, and in that redemption is... Oh my goodness. What a bunch of riches. I mean, it's better than the rainbow I saw yesterday. I love my Pizza Hut phone app. Absolutely love it. And I get on that thing and I create me a pizza that I want. And Katie, the, the, the little miser that she is... She said, it costs two more dollars <laughs> to use that phone app. She said, I call them and do my order. I said, baby, I don't tell nobody nothing. I write everything I got. There's, four, there's a record of it. Because if I get on that phone and I tell this guy my masterpiece of a creation that I'm making here, I know he's going to miss something on that thing because people don't listen to what you have to say. And therefore, I'm going to do it with my phone app. And if it's wrong when I get there, I can hold that up. And I can say, see, I said ham. <laughs> And so then Lois sits in on me a little bit and she says, why don't you call it? Why don't you save $2? Why don't you save some money? We're trying to save money. Why don't you save some money? I said, because I want to use my phone app. It's cool. <laughs> so I go to Pizza at Wayne Street in Holly Springs and I pick up my masterpiece. <laughs> And I'm feeling good about my extra two dollars I spent. And I'm riding down the road and it has rained at my house. And I top the hills at Holly Springs 
And there's this giant rainbow, and the end of it's coming right down where my house is on Mill Creek Road. And I said, praise God, see, there's a rainbow coming. They follow gold right there at the end of my rainbow at my house. I felt good about my two dollar extra people for using my phone. Why I told you that, I have no idea. <laughs> See, I got A B in back yonder. Did you know God loves you tonight? Yes, Did you know He loves you? Stand with me tonight. Praise the name of Jesus. God's a good God. Yes, He is. Amen. He loves you more than you could ever think He does. He loves His saints. He loves this world, but He loves you. He loves what He's done inside of your heart. You know, sin's a terrible thing. If you're here tonight and there's something in your life that's not right, I pray that you ask God to forgive you and that you get it under the blood. God loves you. God wants to serve you. He wants to help you. He wants to minister to you in your life. And He does that. He does that as you and I surrender ourselves to Him. We make it right. We fix it. We fix what's wrong and we fix it through faith in Him and what He has done for us. And then we take the steps that the Holy Spirit leads you and I to do to fix whatever it is that's wrong in our life. God knows how to fix it. Amen? Amen. Amen. I love y'all so much. I hope you hang around and help us put a chair and a table up tonight instead of get out. <laughs> Remember, stack them seven high. No more, no less. <laughs> <laughs> Got a point right there. All awesome, our heads. Father, yes. touch yes. your people tonight. Yes. Thank, you, Thank you, Lord, for blessing this congregation of people. Thank you, Lord, that we're able to come here tonight and we're able to be encouraged and we're able to laugh and we're able to hold on to the promises that you've given us. Lord, that you hadn't given up on us. Lord, we pray that we don't give up on You, that we hold on to what You've done for us. Lord, I hope that we have the kind of spirit that we can look around and, and realize sometimes we're just kind of funny. We're just ones You've created that You love. We're not perfect here on this side, but God, one of these days the trump's going to sound and You're going to glorify this body. Amen. And You're yes. going to unite it with the spirit and the soul that you saved. And Lord, we're going to forever be with you. And God, we thank you for that. Lord, I speak a blessing over your people tonight. Touch these, Lord, that have lost these loved ones this past week in the car wreck. And, yes. and, and Lord, touch that family and minister to them. Lord, I just I just agree with the congregation right now that you'll that you'll touch that, that family and give them comfort, Lord, yes. where they're at. Father, I, I pray, oh God, that you you would touch the folks in Alabama, Lord, that's been going through some things. And Lord, that you would give healing there to, to um, Kathy and Chris's folks that's over in Alabama that's been going through some stuff. Karen that's suffering with some things. Lord, you know the other needs that, that are here and represented tonight. And Lord, we come together and we agree tonight that you're answering prayer in people's yes. lives. Thank you, Lord, for giving healing. Thank you for healing people tonight, Lord. Yes. Thank You for Your love. Lord, thank You for revealing to us that perfect love opens up the world to us, oh God, that You just open the door and You say walk through it. Walk through and receive the promises of God in the name of Jesus. Lord, touch everybody here. Touch their health. Touch their body. Touch their mind. Touch their soul, their spirit. Encourage them emotionally. Those that have been fighting depression, those that have been fighting loneliness, God, that you just comfort them and, and give them what they need. Those that's been suffering physically, Lord, that you'd reach down through the power of your blood and that you'd grant healing tonight in some people's bodies that's been suffering with some things. Thank you, Lord, for creating love in the hearts and the lives of your people. And Lord, we'll thank you for it. Bless these people. Bless them on their job. Bless them with their finances. Thank You, Lord, for those that give, those that tithe, those that's been ministering all around this world. Thank You, Lord Jesus, for, for those that, that have, have put us on the Internet, that people all across this country 
have seen the Jasper, Georgia prayer meeting from Pickens County. Thank you for that, Lord. Thank you for all the blessings that you give us. But most of all, Lord, thank you for the cross. Thank you for what you did on Calvary for us. And we give you the glory and the honor. And we'll thank you for it and ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. I want you to turn around, give somebody a big hug and tell them that you love them tonight and that you're glad they're here. Amen.